you have to come to a place in your own heart where the fear of taking a step into the unknown is less than the fear of what will happen if you stay where you're at. About a month ago, this is how quickly this happened. We had a representative um, from the Wichita VA, Stephanie Dykes, that came to the School of Social Work and said, hey, um, we want to do some art work with veterans. Veterans that have experienced homelessness that are in our HUD bash program, if you're familiar with that. But we don't know what to do. We don't know where to do it. We have a gallery space that's already reserved, the WSU shift space down on Commerce Street in downtown Wichita. But we have no resources and no ability to get any resources. And we were like creative social work. That's how we could do this. Okay. And the opportunity to be able to have you face-to-face -face at a table with people doing creative social work intervention was too good of an opportunity to pass up as a learning opportunity. But then there's this greater good component of being able to serve people that have a particular vulnerability in Wichita that have a particular need, and there really is not a service for that, okay? How we could fill that gap became really an important part of the service learning component of this class. In the first week, we talked about past identity and we utilized combat boots as a way to be able to um, offer an opportunity for the participants to show their identity of who they've been in the past. And so we had many participants that created um, pieces of art involving the boots, some that represented their experience as veterans, some that represented their experience as um, a family member. We had one gentleman that did a boot that involved the story of his peers that he felt like had experienced racism and oppression within the military. And so part of his identity was wrapped up in the stories of um, people that he worked with and journeyed with as a soldier. Did what a boot? Uh, symbolize uh, whatever you do, don't give up. Uh, the quote actually came from Martin Luther King, and it's, uh, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But, but whatever you do, move forward. And so that's the way my life has been. I've been up, I've been down, but I always had the determination to move forward. Now, let me reiterate that. I had a lot of help in that moving forward because if it was left up to me and my own devices, I probably would have quit. I thought a lot about what does creative empowerment mean to me. Uh, you know, the, the helping for profession piece, I get that. I know, I know what that means. What does it mean to, to empower or to do that in a creative manner? I think that I can kind of conceptualize it as using whatever tool we have, using, um, and in, in particular in this class, using the creative arts, using expressive arts, 
to help people help themselves. The first day I didn't know that it was, I mean, art and drawing and coloring and I didn't know that that's what this class was based on, but I guess that is a way to be creative. I made a helicopter out of it. <laughs> I couldn't help it because that's what I worked on when I was in the Navy. I worked on helicopters. Helicopter Combat Support Squadron 3. Uh, and I just, I knew I wanted to make something because that's why I was there. I went to all the trouble to be there. You guys went to all the trouble to, to be there. So I had to, I knew I was going to have to make something. <laughs> and uh, I just, helicopter made sense. By looking at the boot, I figured it'd be easiest to convert it into that. <laughs> that's what I was looking at. What can I easily convert it into? I guess some excitement is centered around that dynamic, you know, with the students connecting with the veterans. Um, and, and really the veterans were just there to, to kind of like, in a lot of ways, just complete a project and or um, just do something outside the box of, outside the norm of their daily life. And, um, and I think it was a treat to have, you know, the student there present with them uh, and actually engage in, in a conversation and work together on something. Um, I think a lot of them found that to be maybe something they didn't quite expect walking into that, but um, something that they, they really took from uh, as a positive experience uh, in a lot of ways. And, you know, our veterans just don't, they, a lot of times they don't get that one-on-one -on -one attention a lot, and I think um, that's just a neat experience for, for both the students and the veterans to be, be able to do that together. And a lot of shared experiences they find once they get to discussing that, you know, hey, I was in the military as well, and so, you know, lots of, um, like I said, shared ideas that start to come back and forth, and and uh, that dynamic was really neat. When I think of bridging the layers, specifically bridging layers, in in this, in the context of this class, in the context of this this project that we're doing, uh, I, it feels to me almost like not just building a bridge from the vet to his community. Uh, but between the vet and his past, or her past, and a, a bridge between uh, maybe the perceptions and their realities, and, and a bridge between where they're at today and where they want to be tomorrow. So in the second week, we um, wanted to look at who people were now. And so we encouraged our participants to think about who they are and how to be able to represent that portrait of themselves in the present. And it became an opportunity to um, represent self in lots of different ways. We had some people that did kind of a true self-portrait. We had other people that decided that their identity was wrapped up in where they lived or experiences they had um, just in their daily life. And some did not want to look at identity at all and went a whole different direction. And so that was exciting to see the different ways that the participants felt empowered to take their journey.
think it's an amazing thing to see a group of people connect with community, connect into themselves through art, um, through creativity, and to use that to have a voice. And I think that that's some, one of the things that has impacted me the most from working with the veterans in this class is seeing that voice come out and they have something to say. They asked me uh, to come up with something that would describe me, okay, and uh, a lion is bold, doesn't back down from any other lion, protector, but also I would say that I have the personality of a lion. Uh, I am bold, uh, can be outspoken, and being outspoken can can be a hindrance or it can be a benefit. I would like to try to use mine to be a, a benefit. So yeah, initially I was, I was nervous. However, after doing the activity and working with them and hearing their voices and seeing their art, I learned so much from it. I learned how to use art as a way to um, help people find their voice and share their experiences. It's, it's a pleasure to create something, you know from raw materials into a finished product. It's fun to do that, I think. I think it's fun. There were times when I did feel like I was in an uncomfortable place and I do agree that change often comes at, at the edge of discomfort. We have to push ourselves in places that we may not be comfortable to be able to grow and for other people to grow. Um, in this process, being uncomfortable was more about not wanting to say the wrong thing or not wanting to invoke um, maybe a memory that was traumatic. So there was a balance as well of honoring the veteran that we, we were working with or the veterans that we were working with and also being wholeheartedly in the process. Yeah, I think you get to see their personalities just come to life. Um, you know, we've got a few veterans that just are more, more somber and just invest a lot of time and energy into, um, you see a lot of their just heart and soul kind of coming out, whether on canvas or whatever project they're doing. Um, and then you see veterans just, you know their fun-loving kind of uh, personality is, is just to be more jovial and excited, and, and you see that come out too. Um, and so it's just neat to, to see it all be on display um, in that kind of atmosphere, uh, just communicating with others. Some really invest in their time and energy into that, that one and are focused on that one project that they're doing. And I think um, it's, it's been, just been neat to see the different personalities come to life um, and, and having this outlet to do that is just very, very important.
through this activity, I've learned my strength as well as their strength. They came in maybe feeling uncomfortable coming into a classroom with, you know, cameras or other people they weren't familiar with, and they grew from this, and they expressed how it meant to them and what it meant to them to have their voices be heard, and so, yeah, I think I did grow from it. In the third week, um, the focus was on who they wanted to be as they journeyed forward in their lives. And so who is your future identity? What is your future story? And so we had uh, many participants that chose to use word art as a way to be able to give that kind of storytelling forward. And I wrote a speech. It's a five minute speech, and it's about the advantages of being in the military, and it's targeted to young people. For, for veterans, um, especially in our program, program meaning the homeless program, is to provide them a voice, but this idea that um, you know, a homeless veteran, their story, it starts uh, in so, so many different ways. Um, and art is a way just to provide them that outlet to express that story. Now, it all doesn't have to, you know, be the, the veteran that's on the street. You know, it, it could be a, a family that just missed a paycheck and they become um, classified as a homeless veteran. But really, um, that just finding that stigma really is what the idea of this project is, is hoping, hoping to accomplish is uh, reducing some of that in, both within the community and within the veteran themselves and um, finding pride in their work that they do and what they can um, present you know to uh, both themselves and the community and just I think it's a really neat opportunity for that to, to shine through um, in, in what we're doing. This class in particular deals with the creative side and I mean we could use this creative side when working with a community, when working with an individual um, and so it really gives us the tools um, to be the leaders in social work field. artwork uh, helped me to say who I am without saying a word. It took a lot of courage for our students to be able to participate. I think it took a lot of courage for the veterans themselves to participate as well. I think it's really important um, to acknowledge how brave that was to come into a room of people that they had never met before who were suddenly asking parts of their story. Um, that showed a lot of strength on the part of the participants in the workshops themselves, both student and veteran. If nobody gives you an opportunity, then you may think you have nothing to offer. And uh, that's been my case 
especially when you know you have something to offer, but you don't know how to offer it. So this here, this, uh, this uh, course, creat creativity allowed me to express myself in a way that I didn't think I ever would. talk about empowerment we're talking about not just a point in time of people getting power but really this process of how it happens and so what we know is that when people really are going through the process of becoming empowered it starts with this individual recognition that they experience something that they um, to know who they are what their life has been, to really be able to give voice to that story that comes with them, and then be able to take that into this place of consciousness raising, that they realize that they're connected to other people, that their story um, is bridged with others, that they're not alone in some of the struggles that they've experienced, and also to help other people understand what those stories have been like for them. Hi, my name is Steve Bevan. I'm a veteran of the United States Navy. I'm also a graduate of Wichita State University. 1994, Bachelor of Science in Delta Technology. Um, my lecture today is Advantages of Being Active in the Military. Now, this is about the individual, active status only, not after. I'm gonna talk about my qualifications. We're gonna go through why do it, and then we're going to talk about when to do it, uh, self-discipline, learn respect for fellow man, and freedom is not free. Like I said before, I was in the Navy, I was on a ship, but we had helicopters. We used those helicopters to support the fleet. I was HC-3 Helicopter Combat Support Squadron 3 when I'm out. It doesn't mean we're in battle people shooting us, us shooting them. That's not what combat support was. It was mostly just fleet support. Groceries, a lot of that. Of course, I was on a grocery ship and an ammunition ship, so it, it followed. Um, the fleet is an aircraft carrier with a submarine front, submarine back, destroyers, tenders, and then me, grocery ship. this class I, I do see how art could be utilized in a very successful way in working with clients. Um, like I said, art's not really my four point, but I can definitely see that being used in my practice, um, specifically with children. I've seen um, through this class a lot of different art interventions with children, um, and that, that's my focus is more juveniles and, and children, so yes, I could see that being used in my practice. I believe I'll take away 
from this class is the understanding that people just want to be understood. They want to be able to tell their stories. They do want someone to hear them. And we, as social workers especially, need to be more involved in activities like this where we can be a vessel for that and help help people get to that place through some of these programs that we offer. On a surface level, I hope that they were able to come and feel safe and create art that they're proud of. On a deeper level, I hope that they were able to feel some kind of validation at being able to share their voices with the world, at being able to feel heard. And I hope that through this, they understand that the community of Wichita hears them and wants to understand their stories and wants to hear their stories and that they are valid and capable and worthy of being heard. And that's what I hope that they get from this. On the surface, I hope that it was a, a great day where they were able to come and relax and enjoy some cookies and lemonade. However, I hope that in the long term, they feel that their community is behind them and that we want to work to make their situations better. From a personal standpoint, I think my takeaway was um, I need to acknowledge how brave it is of them to do this. Like I would want to like even acknowledge that more than I did because three weeks zoomed by and suddenly they weren't in my classroom anymore and I thought, I still want to tell them how awesome they are. Like I want them to know more of what I saw of them. So in future classes, and, and if we're able to do this kind of partnership again, I want to build in more opportunity for them to get feedback. It makes it become a job. The biggest takeaway that I would want students to come out of this class with is realizing how much people's stories matter. That that's the biggest takeaway for the student. Um, that, again, the process of doing the workshop, creating the opportunity, all the little skills that you learn along the way. Those are important, but nothing is more important than the story and the relationship. And so if they got that from this process, um, then they got what they needed.